So a patient just sent me an article. It was a great article, very interesting. It's on metformin. The question is, does metformin work for prolonging life? There've been some questions about it. Rhonda Patrick and some others have raised potential toxicity for the mitochondria, but that's sort of the point. It's pushing that mitochondria so it responds and improves its function. We'll talk about what that is in just a minute. And a spoiler is hormesis. But there's a new article that just came out in Nature Metabolism. And it acknowledged that yes, metformin does appear to prolong lifespan in a lot of the lifespan lab models like nematodes, you know, worms, some other things. It also said it may prolong it in human cells. Can't prove it yet in humans. But now it's saying, look, it damages it in older lab models, nematodes, worms, and it damages the mitochondria in human cells. Now, how could this be? Again, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Here's two real key questions. What has all this got to do with the Easter Islands? That, that's the picture, we all recognize it. We'll cover that a little bit later too. So here's the study, nature metabolism, loss of metabolic plasticity, underlying metformin toxicity in aged Canarhabditis elegans. And if you know what that is, again, I think it's another type of nematode or worm that they study longevity. Metformin, as most of us know, works in a lot of different places. It can impact the mitochondria, pushes them a little bit. It impacts AMPK, it impacts tumor growth, it impacts the gut biome. It stops gluconeogenesis. So those of us that take it, it's not really clear which of these activities is actually helping. Now, again, how could it cause damage in older age and improved function in younger age? Have you ever heard of the term hormesis? It's a theoretical phenomenon where there's a dose response relationship. Just a little bit of something pushes the organization, gives it just a little bit of stress enough stress so that when it responds to that stress, it's stronger. So that may actually be a possibility here. The example of hormesis given in the definition is uh, low level radiation. Some scientists believe that very low levels of radiation are actually good for the cells. They cause some DNA stimulation. So. What's going on here? Well, again, we're not sure, but again, it's another brick in the wall against saying maybe metformin for aging alone is not helpful. Now let's start talking for a second about Easter Island. It just so happens that they continue to do more research on this and they found out that rapamycin, serolimus, neutralizes that negative effect of metformin on older organisms, older human cells and older lab models. Rapamycin is used on stent coatings. It's used in prevention of organ transplant rejection. And here's the thing, it stimulates autophagy. If you don't know, I've got several videos on the topic. It's uh, David Sabatini, very, very well known for this issue, rapamycin, autophagy, and what that has to do with health. Speaking of connecting dots here, here's where Easter Island comes in. Rapamycin, or serolimus, was discovered on the island of Rapa Nui, and that's the little discovery monument right there. The island of Rapa Nui is known by folks in the West as Easter Island. So again, rapamycin is a black market youth pill. Does it work? Well, I've had a lot of people ask me for it, but I don't use black market drugs, so don't ask me for it. What's the bottom line? Am I stopping metformin? No, I'm not stopping metformin. This is a very soft research signal. I think it's reasonable to think that yes, there is hormesis involved in the mechanism. And I think once some cells and some organelles like mitochondria get to a certain level of degradation, it might just push them over the edge. If you go back and you read about the details on autophagy, 
and we've done several videos on that. There was a great summary article in the New England Journal on autophagy. It's maybe not a bad thing to push those some of those mitochondria that are just about to die. Go ahead and push them off the cliff. So I think it's way too early to throw in the towel on preventive metformin. And besides, it's still a very good drug for prediabetes which causes death and disability in most of us. So please don't overinterpret this one study. Please don't give up on your metformin yet. I'm certainly not. Thank you for your interest. We continue to get great feedback regarding the webinars, and here's why. You know, on the internet, when you hear a webinar, you expect for somebody to try to sell you something. We're not doing that. We're trying to tell you something. People are coming in with their labs from Quest, Inflammation Panel, OGTT, Insulin Survey Response, and then they're finding out, do I have inflammation? Do I have insulin resistance? And where does that fit in terms of other folks? We're getting ready to start one for CIMT as well. So again, people are really excited about finding out their own status. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thanks.